Hey now, and welcome to the KC Toy Reviews. We are here today with the Taskmaster by Hot Toys. Now, this might not be the Taskmaster that everybody's used to from the comics. However, this is from the recent Black Widow movie by Marvel. And personally, I have been very excited for this figure. So as always, let's fine comb those details and dive right the hell in. All right, so here we are with the controversial Taskmaster. And well, the reason I preface by saying that is because what they did to the Taskmaster during the Black Widow movie was an absolute travesty. We are talking about a beloved character from our childhood, the comics that we read growing up that you absolutely destroyed for us, Marvel. This is the second time you've done that. In fact, the first one that comes to mind was the Mandarin, and now we're looking at the Taskmaster. And dare I say, from my childhood, Taskmaster was one of my favorite characters. I mean, I told my friends, my family, you know, I was calling my dad saying, here's his powers, here's what we're going to see in the movie. I was very excited, and you just you just let us down. So I'll stop on the rant right now. I guess I just kind of wanted to preface a little bit and plant that seed because I get it. I get because of what they did. There's a lot of people that do not want this character, and it is absolute travesty as well. Because this is a beautifully crafted figure by Hot Toys. And as we can see through the lens, it looks amazing. And well, I need to squash some of that mindset. Everybody's saying, well, you, you, it was terrible in the movie. What they did to the Taskmaster was terrible. I am right there with you. I get it. Now, when we are bringing a character from the comics to the screen, we need to change it up sometime. I get it, Hollywood. We can't make them look identical to their comic book representations. I think this is a great artistic representation of a fantastic, beloved childhood villain. You know, knowing that Taskmaster can pick up other heroes' abilities, powers, uh, move sets, and stuff like that, to me, makes him one of the most vicious characters in the Marvel Universe. And of course, with that rant being said, let's kind of swing. Let's let's think about a tornado. We have the Taskmaster. We have the Black Widow movie. We have the comic book. It's swirling down to this right here. And I think it looks absolutely amazing. Had it had the comic book accurate skull, sure, I might have been happy, but I get it in Hollywood. What we have here is a Hollywood representation of that character, and we are very lucky. Everybody bitching and moaning, oh, it doesn't look like the comics. When are we ever going to have the opportunity to have the Taskmaster on our shelves? I would present that to everybody out there. Uh, the answer is never. The likelihood of companies out there, even companies like SoSo, you know, third-party companies bringing us villains is very, very rare nowadays. So the fact that we have a top company like Hot Toys bringing Taskmaster to our shelves, I mean, pff, I think everybody's crazy to not rush out and get this. And I'm not even to the review and the scoring system yet. I mean, just look at it through the lens. They've done a fantastic job. Now, dear God, please tell me I'm not the only one picking up some Crisis vibes. If anybody's played the classic game Crisis, and when I say classic, we're talking about old school PC game that used to destroy and completely run PCs to the ground because it was that graphically intense. But there are some major Crisis vibes to the helmet. And of course, as we take our eyes to the head sculpt, there we have our skull representation of the comic book character Taskmaster. They've brought it into this kind of clean metallic look face, and I think it looks great. It wouldn't even make sense nowadays in all these movies and how good these Marvel movies that he would have some actual skull. I mean, it literally looks like a skull. If anybody doesn't know Taskmaster, it literally looks like a skull. So, I mean, I get it that we're bringing this into the 21st century, everybody bashing and stuff like that. And on top of that, look at the fantastic details. There's slight weather into the armor pieces, some chipping, some scratching amazing contrast between the silver the blue the orange just some vibrant vibrant colors that really pop on this character and i think just looks fantastic now one thing that i do gripe on quite a bit and we see this very very commonly when we see armor on top of cloth one six characters 
and that is the armor is all scuffed up, it's weathered, and the cloth suit underneath is pristine. What, does the Taskmaster have some amazing dry cleaner out there? Come on. Come on, Hot Toys. Just throw some paint, just a little bit of spray paint or something to add a little bit of weather into the suit underneath because you have some weather and on top, and he goes through all these battles, but only his armor gets hit? I mean, come on. In my opinion, it comes off as lazy and is becoming more and more common, whether it's Hot Toys or other companies, where the armor is becoming weathered in the suit underneath, in the cloth, whether it doesn't matter what type of material it is, it looks pristine. And the first thing that comes to mind is the three zero Power Rangers. They're like, their armor's all scuffed up, and they're all banged up, and the cloth underneath is a beautiful, pristine, sleek. It just doesn't even make sense, especially with the Power Rangers, because Power Rangers get beat up hardcore. Anybody ever seen a Power Ranger episode? When they get hit, it's like an explosion. Literally, it's like a bomb goes off every time they get hit. So it, it doesn't even make sense. But anyways, that's a rant for another day. It's just becoming very, very common. But with that said, it's not a horrible, horrible knock. It still looks beautiful because the weathering is not that intense. I think it blends good enough. And, you know, the last thing that I would say while we are at this angle right here is that the, you know, the hood has a nice wire in the hood. Of course, I'm probably going to drop them like I always do, but let's try not to. Um, just wanted to show here. So we do have a nice wire that you can, you know, put some dynamic poses with the hood. Let's put them back down in crisis mode. But of course, the reason I note that is you have this beautiful cloth hood wire looks great. Then you have this sculpted nasty plastic scarf around his neck, that's, which is essentially supposed to blend with the hood. I don't know. To me, it doesn't look very nice. Um, it was a big, big miss. I mean, can you imagine? And I mean this. Maybe I'm too excited in the 1-6 scale world, but if there was a really nice, tight-knitted scarf around his neck, especially if there had some wire on it, it will look freaking insane. I always think that when Hot Toys puts out figures, it has a blend between the cloth and the actual figure in the hard plastic itself. They look fantastic. So it's a big miss that the scarf is kind of this hard sculpted plastic around his neck. All right, so let's start here with the accessories. The reason why is, well, let's start with the shield. First off, the shield looks really, really good. Some pretty good detail in there. I actually like the color scheme there. And of course, the downfalls, it is incredibly light and just feels like a piece of plastic from a Black Series toy. Now, that might be a small gripe because, again, at first glance, it looks really good. However, when I have figures like Captain America Endgame and you have that shield in hand, it just feels incredible. So for them to have produced a very lightweight shield, well, the initial observation was, I hate to say it, disappointment. The other disappointing feature here is, well, there's a magnetic feature, which is great. We all love and embrace magnetic technology in the 1-6 scale community. And I know I speak for everyone when I say that, as long as it's done well. And the reason I stress that is, well, we figured that the magnetic piece should pick it up right up. Ah! All right, so let's try that again. So now that he's on a stand, back to our initial rant, magnetic technology, fail. And the reason why I say fail well, you'd figure it'd be right at the back end of his arm here, right at the forearm here, right? Um, it ends up being magnetic on the sides, which makes no sense because you'd want it to clip, boom, just like this. So let's let's see what happens when I let go. Come on, come on, Hot Toys. Now, if I put it more at an angle, please don't make me look dumb here. There. The only reason I kind of stress and put this in the video is the magnetic system on this was very, very finicky and very weak. Does it hold the shield up in the right shots and the right angles? Yes, absolutely. I just don't think that it was executed properly. I am always happy to have magnetic technology in our figures. However, again, it just should have been done properly on this guy. We really have to balance it. Let's see if I get his arm down here, show you here. Oh! See? What a piece of crap. Come on. What is going on? Okay. Make me look like an idiot on here. Let's try it on this side. Oh! What the hell is going on with this? See this? Told you I'm not trying to make people laugh. All right. Let's try this with the hand pointed down. Boom. So we kind of... All right. Let's see how finicky this is. Ready? 
Harry Potter one. Let's just tap it a little bit. Okay. Not, not horrible. Whoop. There we go. There we go. So now it's kind of on there decent, but um, as you can see, it's a little bit finicky the way it goes on there. So there's some decent taps going. Oh, look at that. Blah, 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 blah. Oh! The magnet system should have been right here on the back of the forearm versus the sides of it. Um, very strange that they would have put the magnet here. Who holds the shield like that? We would hold the shield like this on the back of our arm, not like this. I don't know. I'm not going to show you what happens. So, oh, God! There we go. Just one last shot to show you how the magnet system semi works. And it's not, and it's probably one of those things, again, as I'm saying it, people are going to be like, it wasn't that hard. It, it was easy. You know, I get it. And if you get it in the right spot, it's going to fit. It just should have been right here on top of the silver spot. The magnet system should have been built right there, right on top of the forearm in the silver spot, not on the sides. That's the ultimate message there. Um, and then on top of that, it is just slightly weak of a system. But it works. It holds it. I'm not saying it's going to be dropping it all day long. Just be careful. So it does include this bow. Um, he has a couple extra hands that can actually pull the string back. It really reminds me of the Sideshow G.I. Joe Storm Shadow and stuff like that. But not too, too much to go in on the bow. I mean, decent detail, great paint scheme to it. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the details on it. He holds it firmly in the hand. However, I will always admit the bow shots that you see in the promo pictures are very hard to actually pull off, but that's just my opinion. Um, a lot of the pieces of armor on this guy, like the shoulder pieces, are Velcro, um, so you can take those. I'm not going to do it right now. I'll end up making them fall again. You can take those Velcro shoulder pieces off to really try to get it into the right position to get him there. It's just not the easiest thing in the world, in my opinion. And last off, our sword accessory. Dare I say this thing is a little reminiscent of a dark saber? Uh, just my opinion, but that was one of the first things I thought. Oh, that was one of the first things I thought when this thing came out of the box. But um, pretty good detail on it. It's just, I hate to say it, the weapons and the feel of them, like the shield and this sword here, just really remind me of like a G.I. Joe-ish weapon. They're very light plastic feel to them compared to some of the quality weapons I've had on recent reviews. But of course, that's not to say it's a piece of crap or anything like that. Obviously, it looks nice. It holds well in his hands. And, well, I'm not going to complain too, too much. And the last accessory. And, well, eh, maybe I lied. We have the bow. And, the bow, and I do want to show you. Do we'll get a little arrow with it. So you get three arrows. There is no quiver, so you can't put the additional two arrows on him. Maybe they just included them in case you lost it. But just wanted to include this again. G.I. Joe detail-ish level arrow. It's just Pretty much a straight black paint on this, but um, wow, it looks like I'm like, I can't hold the straight. <laughs> and last up, these awesome spike swords on his arm. So they are interchangeable. You have this here. Very, very simple. They just basically kind of they just pop off like this. And then you can put this piece back on if you do not want it to have a sword. But it ends up being a very easy system to get those on and off. And as always, Hot Toys has included a quality stand. No complaints whatsoever. A crotch grabber style stand with a beautiful logo from the Black Widow movie. And it does add to the longevity of the figure because there's no spots on this where it's going to damage your figure. Now just a quick zoom at the material and kind of the contrast between the pants and the leg armor. If you do bring this leg all the way up due to these pieces here, there is a slight hindrance to your articulation. Now, I'm not sure how many people are going to bring it up that far at an angle, but it's something to note that these could hinder because they end up hitting the waistline. But overall, we do have double jointed knees. We do have double jointed arms. The cloth ish um, material underneath, dare I say, is paper thin. I'm not sure if that's a good or bad thing. Maybe they found this fantastic material that's going to hold up great longevity and it's thin like that. But again, it's just something to know. When I felt it underneath, it is like paper thin. I feel like I could rip it if I put uh, two fingers and tried to rip this material. Just, but that also could be at these printed parts. Um, the smooth cloth parts here don't have that same feel. And I would say the overall message of the suit and the cloth underneath is it's good quality, it feels good, and it adds to some really great articulation on this guy. And I want to note these little pouches on the side. First thing I thought was, is there a little Velcro strap that I can lift up, put stuff in here? The answer is no. You cannot move these. 
they are kind of pre-stuff, so it looks like they are jammed with some materials and items there. But um, overall, it does look great, and the tailoring between the suit and the contrast on the armor, I think, is spot on. Now, as we start to wrap this up and slap a score on this guy slash girl, some final closing notes. And the first being, don't sleep on this just because you didn't like it from the movie. We have to admit, a lot of characters from the Marvel movies, and whether it's Marvel, Fox, Sony, they're not necessarily ripped directly from the comics. Being that Taskmaster had a straight-up skull as a face, I think they did a great job incorporating that into his helmet, and down through the body, which then of course translates to this awesome armor futuristic suit. He might not have a cape like he did in the comics, but again, I don't know if I care too much. Villains are rare. They are far and few in between nowadays. We gotta take what we can get. And being that I am a massive fan of Taskmaster from the comic, I am very happy with what I have in front of me. And I don't know if I would have gave a crap whether it was a female version, you know, if they actually went with a female body with this uh, versus a male body. I think I would have been happy either way. Given that this is actually sculpted out of a male body, I think that it looks bad ass. The armor looks great. The tailoring's great. Fantastic articulation. A plethora of weapons that you can play with. In fact, so many weapons and stuff that he came with that I had a hard time posing this guy. And I should know, and I'm not gonna go back and add it, I, I completely forgot. Uh, if you noticed on the right hand here, in the beginning shots of this video, he had a kind of claw-ish look. He does come with two Black Panther hands. I totally forgot to show those off. But again, if you look back at the beginning of the video, he does have one on the right hand and they include one for both hands. So you have the bow and arrow, you have the Black Panther hands, you have a sword arm that you can put on each of them, and then of course you have an actual sword. And on top of that, the kind of clunky magnetic shield that you can add to either arm. And I do want to stress that, the magnets go through both arms, so we can put it on the left arm or the right arm. Just again, be careful, it is a little finicky. But the overall look of this guy, as he spins, to me, puts a smile on my face. He's freaking awesome and as i said over and over villains are very rare so i'm excited to have a very high detailed representation of taskmaster sure might not be straight from the comics but he looks badass and he's going to be on my shelf for a very long time we have an awesome hood that we can put over the head sculpt a wire through the hood and yeah they should have continued down from that awesome wired hood into an actual scarf on his chest piece there but again i'm not going to knock it too much because overall this thing is great so with all that said as far as a score on this guy believe it or not i knew it two minutes into my review i mean i knew it two minutes into talking and babbling on this guy and that was an 8.7 at a 10. This is, as always, a very high quality figure from Hot Toys in a villain on top of that. Great articulation, fantastic details, a hood that you can make some dynamic poses with, a plethora of weapons, detailed armor, and really truly, as always, amazing tailoring that just perfectly fits this body. I mean, dare I say, under the right lens, this guy could probably look real. The proportions are perfect. And as always, with that being said, do I recommend this? Absolutely. My guess is it's going to be some type of sleeper hit. And the reason I stress that is everybody's been complaining. Who cares? Who cares about this guy? Nobody's really talking about the release of this guy. It leads me to believe there probably wasn't too many pre-orders. So a year or two down the road, the prices probably will go up on a character like this because he will become more of a rarity. They're never going to make this guy again. This is going to be a one and done on a villain like this. So scoop him up now. I believe he's in the 240 to 260 range, which is a fantastic price knowing that we're now at 350 to more for some of these other Marvel characters. And all the weapons he comes with, a 1-6 scale stand, you just really can't go wrong for the price, the detail, and what we have. And as I said over and over, he looks bad ass. So as always, 8.7 out of 10, Casey Toys, signing off today, Black Widow. And yeah, you might have destroyed one of the comic book characters that we loved and grew up with, but you know what? There is a slight redemption because this guy slash girl looks bad ass casey toys taskmaster girl guy don't even know what it is anymore see you guys next time ah!
Ah.